so everyone has been wondering whether or not uh, Naruto could beat Goku in a fight. And despite this having nothing to do with D&D, it started a whole fight. And now people are crying and screaming. And now session's canceled, and I'm just confused. Can't even keep a straight face. Welcome back <laughs> to the Sessions Cancel podcast. I just had to. Where we just had an hour long conversation about how stupid anime power scaling is. It's me, Isaiah. <laughs> and I'm here with Josh. I mean, yes, I'm here. And, uh, you know, you could have just not brought it back up, you could have just left it out. Same. No, I don't think I will. I mean, <laughs> I was thinking about how to how to rate it back to D D, but then I was like, "How do you?" I mean, you can power scale the classes, but that's like you could yes. I don't feel like that'd be I mean, very exciting though. No, because mechanically, Monk would just wins because stun and more punch and force damage. It's a whole thing. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, we were, <laughs> we're, we're working our way through whatever this mini series call is called, uh, where we sort of review and, and report in on the new, uh, player's handbook classes that are dropping, or at this point have all already dropped, but I went on a two week vacation. Something, so soon. something D's nuts joke. Something, something one D's nuts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this week, we're doubling up, baby, as we're talking about Barbarian and Monk, objectively probably two of the best new versions of the classes that we've gotten, which is wild because Ranger sucks so fucking bad, it's impressive. Yeah. How did you fumble that bag, guys? What happened? I'm fine. I'm not salty about it. You are. No, I'm really salty. It bothers me. It bothers me a lot, and that one's still green. Uh, so I, I, b before we go, I would like to point out, um, so the embargo has, dr okay. I have a little story about this. I I don't know if you've noticed. Oh, oh, I'm aware. I'm aware of all of this shit that's going on. Of the drama. It's, yeah. Yeah. So the embargo for the player's handbook for the 2024 player's handbook has dropped. So those of you listening may have rolled over to your favorite D and D influencer and seen their posting videos about the news player's handbook. You may have also noticed that uh, there's a lot of blurry pages out there because Wizards of the Coast and or Hasbro, probably Hasbro, in their infinite wisdom decided to say that you can't post more than 50% of a single page or 75% of a double page spread. Uh, you can't show it in the video because they're worried about taking screenshots from said videos and then people piecing those screenshots together to make a complete PDF of the book, ignoring the fact that they already gave the book out to the public at Gen Con, like a couple of days before the embargo, so people could just scan it and do that anyway. So now they're all just sort of, they're just punishing the YouTubers for so posting stupid. videos promoting the book that they're trying to promote and sell. So you may go out there and find a video. For example, uh, Sly Flourish has one that he put up where the entire video is just him with the book on the table and a big giant blurry square over the book because he couldn't show anything. Uh, so yeah. Uh, the reason I bring this all up is because we may mention information. So Actually, sorry, there's a little bit more. I forgot a, a, another piece of the story. Some of the videos have not been blurred or taken down yet because of the way the person was presenting them. So uh, Teo Sabadia on his YouTube alpha stream, his video is still up showing the pages because the way he shot it, it would be a massive pain in the ass for him to blur the pages. So he's trying to negotiate with wizards some sort of method to make them happy and him not have to do the redo the entire video because they fucked up and didn't tell anyone about the whole don't show 50% of the page or 75% of the spread situation. So yeah, it's a fucking mess right now in the D&D &D YouTube space. Um, 
Which it, I just you know wizards can't. They just they just can't not fuck up. Is really what it is. It's wild. It's like you you look at a minefield, which you can clearly see, yeah. where all of the mines are in the field. And then you throw rocks at them. And then you put a blindfold on, <laughs> and start river dancing your way down the field. Now, in theory, you could have river danced down the field and not set off a single mine, but you and your infinite fucking stupidity decided to put a blindfold on. Yeah. It's, it is so upsetting that all you can do is fucking laugh at it. I like, yeah, it's very dumb. How do you say, all right, guys, you can do all this stuff and then people do it. And then after they do it, you go, no, no, sorry, you can't do any of this. Here's Don't, actually a sheet that no, no, we no. didn't give you when you signed the NDA. Like, yeah, they didn't say you can't do it. They just said you can't do it that way. We want you to do it this way. But again, after this was given to them post NDA. Yes, yes. I don't even think that's, that's legal. You know, I have no idea. Yeah, that one, you know, who the fuck knows, dude? Who the fuck knows? Like, I'm not, I'm not pretending to be a lawyer, but as far as I'm aware, if you write up a contract... And a person signs that contract, right? I'm I unless it's written into the contract, and it may have been because Hasbro are fucking skeezy like that. You can't just alter the terms of the deal. You're not Darth fucking Vader. Yeah, I I, I honestly do not like, bro. I have no like. Mer. Once mer. again, I'm an idiot with a microphone on YouTube. Correct. But that sounds sketch as fuck. It does sound a little sketch. Uh, um, the reason that I'm bringing that up, uh, yeah, it, it's a it's a chaotic scene. The, the reason I'm bringing it up, though, is is uh, as we are going through the classes and we say, you know, there may be some information that we are lacking or is slightly off because we're going off the D&D articles and the videos where they didn't necessarily give us every little detail. So you may have seen a video that specifies a detail that we don't know, but we didn't see that video. But also that video might not be up anymore or it might be blurry. So you can't see the detail. So it's just a big fucking mess. So like if we get some regard or aren't sure, that's probably why. Because all of the information is just become a hellscape. <laughs> yes, that's the rest. That's the main reason I'm bringing it up. Uh, Yeah, I just wanted to I just wanted to mention I would say this was a joke. But it's not funny. It's just annoying. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to mention it in case someone's like listening is like that conflicts with information. Yeah, that's probably why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we do not have the documentation. That we lack the do we lack. Yes, we lack the documentation and the people who have the documentation are now confused about said document. It's all <laughs> again. And also, you know what really helped this situation a lot? Hmm. Like a lot, a lot. If wizards just sold PDFs. Yes. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, but anyway. Let's get to it, because we're not here to talk about the wizards drama necessarily. So, uh, yeah. True. Very true. So, uh, just overall, you know, uh, temperature check. Thoughts on new monk and new barb? Um, I mean, uh, I think probably got the best upgrades of everybody amongst the uh, classes. Yeah, no, I, I pretty much. Yeah, agree. I mean, Bard got some pretty good stuff, too. Fighter got some really cool stuff, but I think, yeah, Barbarian and Monk probably the best. Most improved, I guess I would say. Granted, Monk had quite a long distance to travel to get to that improvement, so being most improved makes sense. Uh, Correct. Barbarian, I didn't feel like necessarily needed a ton of love, but it got some pretty good love, so. Yeah, I, I, I would say I like 99% of the changes or additions that we got to Barbarian. There's a couple things that I wish they had kept and in, integrated into some of the stuff they changed. <laughs> I have um, a feeling I know what those we'll are going to be. That. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you are. Did you notice this? I thought this was so funny. Mm -hmm. So remember what I was whinging about in the previous episode where they just put a bunch of stuff on the on the um, spreadsheet and just said, marked it as removed? Yeah. 
So did you notice for the Barbarians version, everything that they removed, they literally did what I said, which was they don't just put remove, they just say replaced with this ability, this does this now, in the what's new section. Oh, I actually didn't notice that, no. I know, I, I thought that was so fun, it, it, and I was right. It was just more uh, aesthetically pleasing, and it, it presents the information in a way that makes me think you're not just taking my toys away. You know what's funny? The Barbarian mm. article was written before the Ranger one. I'm fucking dead. Wow, I don't like that. Awesome. The Barbarian one also doesn't have the weird copium. <laughs> no, it, dude. <laughs> Brother. I, okay, so if you didn't tune in last time, if you, anyone who hasn't yet, check out the, the document they released for Ranger. Yeah, the, the Ranger article. Read it, and and not only should you read the actual table they give you, like, read into the notes themselves. Whoever wrote that was coping so hard. It screamed of, like, no, guys, no, seriously, no, this is actually so much better. It's so cool. Guys, trust me, please. It's so good. It's like, Pretty no. Much. <laughs> no, I don't think I will. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it was bad. But also funny. Very, very funny. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> like funny read as depressing, but yes, also yeah. kind of funny at the same time. Uh, but yeah, without the, oh, you know, before we really get started, Josh, uh, tell the people what they got to know. Uh, eat your vegetables, take your vitamins, register to vote. Don't buy from Intel right now. That Intel thing, is that <laughs> when when was 13th to 14th gen? When should I be worried? I'm pretty sure you have a 12th gen CPU. But Ooh. I don't remember off the nice. top of my head. I have an i9. That's no, that's, that's the processor. That's that's not the that's not the generation, my guy. <laughs> I know, I I fucking bigger number. The bigger number is the generation. Yeah. Uh, also f uh, subscribe or follow on whatever podcast platform you're currently listening on that's the other thing you can do there we go also seriously though All don't right. buy a 13 14 gen intel cpu right now <laughs> yeah no, or, i think the patch comes out in like two weeks yeah we'll see if and that maybe. actually does we'll see right. if that does anything but yeah, yeah i was about to say we'll, we'll <laughs> see that might that might just make things worse we don't know yeah <sighs> if you don't know uh, uh fucking C intel CPUs, cpus right now are uh fucked up and are burning themselves out yeah like they have like a volt rate. they have like a voltage problem i forget exactly what it is but they're just they're just cooking themselves basically how does this shit keep happening we went from a trillion dollar up a uh, 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 trillion dollars worth of damages drop on an update across all security systems worldwide yep. and now dell is just bricking its own shit by accident intel not dell or sorry, Intel, yeah. Dell, I mean, the Dell answer has is late stage up. capitalism. I mean, yes. But Dell has fucked up enough. Very places. funny. See us next time for our computer talk podcast. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, with Barbarian, I think we got to start at the beginning. Right? At the dawn of time. The creation of first edition. Yes. Back when good old guy Gax was telling people that women couldn't play D and D because they they weren't, weren't as smart, smart or something enough. like that, yeah, yeah. Cast your mind back to the before time when casual sexism was a funny thing that gentlemen did around a game table. Except, don't do that. That's actually very bad. Actually, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, we're not actually. Yeah, we're not actually. Anyway, yeah, no. eighty percent of my party right now is women. <laughs> Please don't kill me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so we'll start at the top. The thing that everybody cares about with Barbarian, the, you know, the thing that's not a spell that Barbarian's built around so that the holder can't fuck your entire class like Ranger. Oof. Uh, it's Rage. And yeah, no, Rage I is great. Like rage. Uh, I would like to Rage. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, Rages are sick. I uh, The way that they've done it now is that uh, not only can you maintain your rage through 
you know, harrowing enemies and being attacked. You can also do it by forcing saving throws. And if you can't do any of those things, you can still burn a bonus action to maintain it. And you get a reuse of it uh, after a short rest. This was, this is actually, this is one of the things we were talking about with, um, oh God, help me out, Josh. Uh, what class were we talking? Where you get like some of your stuff back on a short rest. Wizard? Was it wizard? Oh, uh, no. We, we, uh, uh, Paladin? Claire? I, don't I think know. it was Paladin, yeah. Might have been Paladin? I think it was Paladin. Let's just say it was Paladin. Yeah, we're, we're good. We, we were talking about this a couple episodes ago where we were saying partial, something really interesting. Partial restoration on short rest. Yes, something something to insinuate short resting and also feel like Sinuate? everyone gets something back on a short rest and it's not just a thing for monks and warlocks. I believe I believe the word the incentive. I believe the word you're looking for there was incentivized, not insinuate. <laughs> yes, my bad. Incentivized. Anyway, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. So, yes, Barbarian gets because they get like one. Yeah, they get one rage on a short rest back which, yes, is, is giving the classes, giving everyone a reason to want a short rest so it doesn't feel like, you know, the warlock and the wizard want a short rest and nobody else does or whatever. Uh, yes, that is a, this is, this is a good thing. It seems like they're doing that with basically everybody. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. So, you know what's cool is it, that means that we were sort of in a roundabout way, right? Where we were like, no, they're not getting rid of, getting rid of short rest. That would be ridiculous. I mean, not even a roundabout In fact, way. It's probably the opposite. We were we were just straight up right. There was no roundabout about it. <laughs> Fair enough. I was trying to be. I was, I was trying to be nice. No, nah, I mean we. Yeah, called, no, we were we right. It. Of course, they're not getting rid of short rest. That would be dumb. Uh, they're just doing exactly what we said it would be, which is they're just incentivizing people to take more short rest. So. There's so many. Yeah. It, well, because there's so many other. I don't even I, I don't even remember exactly why people were saying that they were getting rid of short rest. I remember people being like, oh, less things are coming back on short rest or whatever. They must be de-incentivizing it. I don't even really remember what those things were. I don't even I don't either. It has, so it had to do with pack magic. That was one of them. Uh, um, yeah. Is one of the iterations where they were like. It's the one where they did. They were being really weird about pack magic and were like, no, it's actually just like every other spell system. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's all I remember. There was a collective like, what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, but yes, it, it, it was it was a ridiculous notion to uh, to think that short rests were going away because it would be. You'd have to retool so many things that that's not the kind of thing that you just casually remove and be like, everything's fine. Like it would I feel like it would break quite a few things. So, yes. Yeah. But, you know, people love to yeah, go. Just, just got to pat ourselves in the back for that one. Yeah, just a smidgen. Yeah, just a, just a wee bit. Uh, after that, we have weapon mastery. Woo! Um, Woo! Everybody else who's weapon a martial master, fighter is getting weapon mastery. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to be cool. I still think so. We did actually, you know, I it is still mostly a woo because we're getting more options for physical fighters. And I like that. Yes. But we did actually see what some of the weapon mastery stuff is. And I was kind of right where I was like, what we have right now for masteries is OK. But I feel like they could have done more. I mean, they're basically um, what we got in the playtest. They are, yeah, but I know we were we were saying when we talked about them, like they might end up just tweaking them a little bit and adding more. It doesn't look like they have. And again, what we have is not bad, but I think if I do run a 5e game, I'm just going to swap the weapon masteries we get with the fucking Midgard ones, because I just find them to be more mechanically interesting. Right, yeah, yeah, but that's just me. No, I mean, yeah, weapon masters do... The weapon masteries do feel like they could have been a little spicier. I would I would agree with that. But also, I'm not super surprised by the fact that they're not. Um, also, if you want to uh, the Midgard weapon options, you may also want to see if Tales of the Valiant has an updated version of those in that game, because that's uh, that's that's out now. And 
Cobalt Press. That's right. Matt was telling me about that. Yeah, and Cobalt Press took a lot of their various books that they have written and like put it into that game. So there may be updated versions of those in that. I don't know. Hmm. They want to do some research. PDFs be a little good. expansive, though. I'm not gonna lie. PDFs. Are they? How much are they? Thirty-five. Oh, hmm. Yeah, that is a little spicy. A little expand. But anyway. Uh, uh. Yeah. Barbarian weapon masteries. You get two. You choose two melee weapons. You gain those masteries. You may change your chosen weapons each long rest. You gain access to more as you level up. Bing, boom, bang. Yeah. I feel, uh, can I just say, up. I get why they did it mechanically, but I feel like thematically it's a little weird that you could change your mastery properties because it's just like, I've trained my entire life to wield a long sword, so I'm very good at it. I have mastered it. But... Tomorrow morning, when I wake up, I will have taken all that training and transferred it to my short, short sword. Yeah, I mean, like, it's that thing that I, I, I literally complained <laughs> about the other day where it's like, how do you just stop being good with like? Yeah, yeah. It's a little weird. It's like, like oh, yeah, I'm really good with a great sword. So I do the fucking Lons connect, you know, spin to win. You just you just forget how to spin to win. Yeah, you forget how to spin to win, but then you remember how to attack really fast with short sword. trade out the, you 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 disconnect the neuron synapses for the great sword and and reconnect the short sword ones move them around this is like a switchboard just like click in click yeah, out. yeah 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 <laughs> like a computer switchboard <laughs> yep nice uh after that danger we have sense. danger sense um yeah this is just better this is it it's funny this is one of those it's just better but it's 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 just better in so far as it's how everyone's been running it since More 2014 anyway, anyway, which is yeah. to say uh, Danger Sense no longer requires you to see the or shit that's trying to kill you in yeah. order to get advantage. Um, again, everyone's been doing it that way anyway. Yes. You know, and it's this is one of the things that's always killed me, right? Because D&D &D likes to think it's really, really specific about its wording. But Danger Sense is not Danger Vision. <laughs> Well, it did specify Danger here. Sense implies, uh, yeah, it's, well, yeah, but like it implies that it's just a preternatural thing. It's just like a feeling that you have, you know? So you shouldn't have to see it, right? Spider-Man doesn't have to see the bullet flying at the back of his head. He just knows it's there. Uh, I'm sort of making it, whatever. Anyway, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, that being said, before I forget, so d did you notice the specific wording that Mr. Crawford put in when he was talking about rage? Oh. And we're backpedaling a little bit. So they were basically talking about how rage is now uh, in lore. It's no longer this like you just hulk out and get mad. It is now a like magical thing. It's like an inherently supernatural ability. Uh. I Go ahead. Yes. I, I don't know how I feel about that. Like, again, this doesn't match the what we keep seeing in lore, which is that D&D &D is, is trying to be a low magic system. But every piece of material that gets put out completely fucking contradicts that. Well, two things. Uh, one, I don't think they're trying to be a low magic system anymore. I think if you look at the art, and the style of things in general and the the way that the abilities have changed, I think they've pretty much given up on this idea of D&D &D being a low magic game. I think they've accepted their over the top uh, superhero -esque fantasy nonsense. Um, so, yeah, I, don't, I think that's out the window uh, in terms of the rage is like a preternatural magical thingy. I always thought of it that way anyway, I'm going to be honest. Like, I, I don't know if it's just because of the wording of stuff like Totem Barbarian as a subclass and stuff, 
but I always assumed that Barbarian's Rage was like a weird primordial energy because the, uh, you know, barbar I always thought of Barbarians as like, uh, like nature warriors, like defenders of nature type stuff. Like they're like druids, but they're the angry fighty version of a druid kind of thing. So that doesn't really phase me that much. You know, I suppose I, yeah, I mean, so let's see of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten total subclasses. Uh, we have Battle Rager, Berserker and Juggernaut, which are non magical. Everything else is so fair enough. I don't necessarily blame you for that. I for me, the fiction is like comic book Conan, which is very different than like the Conan the Barbarian movie because comic book Conan has this like berserker mode he goes into where he just becomes super strong. And for me, it's just like a, the like, you just re out, you just, you know, you, you just Hulk out on people, but in like a non Marvel Hulk out, you just get so mad that you punch hard. That's how I've always seen it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the extra damage and the resistance to like incoming damage and stuff. I, I don't know. And the way that like, a lot of the subclasses you got weird. Also, the fact that you could like stuff like uh, what was the ability called? Um, the one where you went down and then you got back up at one hit point. The, like relent. Was it relentless? Rage? Yeah, relent. Relentless rage. Stuff like that always yeah. made me think it had to have at least some element of magical nonsense. You know? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I can see where you're coming from with that. With me, it was the like. You know, because I, I grew up watching like shit like Hajime no Ippo, which just like, the, you're, you know, the power of determination. You're just like, no. Yeah, but even in anime like that, I still feel like there's this sort of like very subtle under the hood, like low key magical power kind of thing. It's kind of like how in sports anime where everyone pulls out their special cool ability and like in universe, nobody thinks of them as anything other than like really good at playing baseball. But as an audience member, you can clearly say that they have the power to light their bat on fire. They hit so hard. You know what I mean? Like, it's that kind of weird thing. It's like yeah, a, it's I, like I a guess. weird under the hood magic. Fair enough. But yeah, I, I, I never saw it as magical. I just saw it as like tapping into an inner strength. I also just kind uh, of honestly, I just kind of think of um, everything in 5e as being like at least a little bit low key magical. You know, fair enough. I, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree. I, I just feel like. Even in a high magic setting, it's cool to have characters who aren't magical, you know? Yeah, I mean, I would like that. I I think that's just gone out the window with 5e, unfortunately. Yeah, I suppose. I think if you want that vibe, you just got to look at other games. Yeah. Play other games, people. Play other games. True. Uh, along with, uh, back to, or not back to, but like, you know, going away from rage, uh, uh -huh. obviously we've jumped up to four subclasses, uh, as opposed to the barbarians initial two in 2020 and uh, 2014, they've added world tree and zealot and renamed totem warrior to wild heart, which is fine. I'm fine uh, it. yeah, I'm fine. It's one of those things where I'm like, I feel like you didn't need to change it. I think they're moving away from like a cultural thing, but like. Yes, they absolutely a are. Totem, like a totem is a cultural thing, but it is now also a more generalized word. It's it's like how the word fetish wasn't always a sex thing. True. It just meant a thing that you like held on to. Like it was like a curio that you like found a weird fascination with. That is true. That's kind yes, of how was. totem can be described now, although totem think, still does have a, like an inherently religious side to it. I think totem in particular feels like a little bit of an, a touchy subject one because totem gets it, it, it. It's an American company and totems and the idea of totemic animals gets associated with Native American culture a lot. Uh, not that, although I don't even know if all Native Americans even really use that concept, but it gets associated I, with that. <laughs> So like a lot of them do. So like, let's put it this way. You see it as far up north as like the Inuit. But you also see it as far down south as Puerto Rico and yeah. farther, you know? 
Um, like the Taino had animal spirits. Uh, that's where a lot, like, you ever see like the weird little tattoo on people that looks like a frog thing? That's a, that's no. a totem. Oh, okay. Uh, all that being said, though, I do also feel like it being called Totem Warrior was kind of a weird one in the first place because it had nothing to do with like the idea of totems. It was just animals like you just had animal techniques. So Wild Heart, I feel like does kind of make more sense in describing what the class is about, which is like you get weird superpowers from animals. You know? Yeah, well, so uh, to, like, I, like I said, I like <laughs> Hellscapes did this where they just called a, cla- a subclass fetishist, but they didn't I, mean it in the sex thing. Right, right, they right. Just, yeah. Fetishists just have these little weird baubles that they're like, this is so important. You don't understand. This actually can reflect reality. And you're like, OK, weirdo. <laughs> By the way, this this is the frog tattoo I'm talking about. I, I just posted it. I have not seen that. No. OK, this, this is a this is a. Uh, the Taino symbol for the Koki frog that, that frog that makes the funny oh, sound. The koki? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, this is this is a lot of Puerto Ricans will have this. It, I don't remember what it means. It does actually have a meaning, but. Uh, apparently female fertility and children. Hmm, interesting. OK, OK. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I, it's it's one of those things where you changed it, but it's not like key for me where I, I am genuinely a little miffed that they stopped calling it key. Uh, Wild heart. Yeah, it makes sense. It is what it is. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> they removed feral instinct uh, and replaced it with instinctive pounce. I actually Wait. liked feral instinct. Kind of jumped over uh, primal knowledge there. Oh, did I? Shit, did I miss primal knowledge? I mean, I'm looking. I at did. It. I did. Oh, I'm, I know. Yeah, I know. I, I did miss it. I'm a dunce. Apologies. <laughs> yes. Um, they added primal knowledge at level three. Uh, you gain proficiency with a skill of your choice in the barbarian list, and you get to replace uh, the typical ability score uh, with strength, whatever that is, or the check. So, yeah. for example, you can make a survival check with strength, which is very funny. No, I think the really funny one is you can make stealth checks with strength. Do barbs have proficiency in stealth? You can gain it, or, or you don't have to be... Profi- I forget. Because people are making jokes about that. I don't think you have to be proficient necessarily. I'm not sure. Are you sure? It, yeah, it says you gain proficiency. Well, replace I know it doesn't the... say here, but I've seen people other places mention it that you can make strength stealth check. I think Jeremy make did Jeremy Crawford make a joke. Somebody made a joke about it, about like you could do stealth checks with strength. I didn't. I must have missed that. But yes, that's very funny. Yes. If you can, that's great. You just flex it. I guess is the idea that you're flexing so fucking hard that your body has just become like stone. You just like you just blend into the background. I I believe the justification is that, again, you're pulling from the primal magic to help you. And that your 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 ability score is representing that. I don't know, I kind of like the idea that you just jump into a mud puddle and flex out and you're, you know, you're so (laughs) hard. That when someone pokes you, it's like, oh, this is just stone, but it's just some caked on mud. You're just so fucking hard. I mean, that would be kind of... You're just so hard. When you hard, you hard. When you hard, you hard, you... Uh, yeah, they... Back to Feral So, yes, uh, Primal Knowledge is a fun little ability. (laughs) Yeah, um, they have removed it. Yeah, what was it? What did Feral Instinct Uh, even do again? So, it it let you... If you entered a rage you could ignore the surprise condition before you were afflicted with surprise. I I get why it was removed because it's the idea of like, well, what if like a lot too many people were getting surprised before they could enter rage? I, I would just say you could like, even if you're surprised, you can just enter or frankly, because barbarians, right? Like I feel like uh, 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 Conan is a perfect example of a barbarian. Conan does not get scared. You know, like a giant monster pops out and he looks at it and he's like, that's it, I'm getting me mallet. Like, you know, like you just, <laughs> the idea that barbarians are just so metal that you can't frighten them or surprise them. I don't know. I think that'd be a cool like class ability. Well, so yeah, the wording of it was, if you are surprised at the beginning of combat and aren't incapacitated, 
You can act normally on your first turn, but only if you enter rage before doing anything else on that turn. So you have to start your turn, rage, then do something uh, to ignore oh. the surprise. And what the fuck? That's so cool. I love that idea. Um, I think they probably part of the reason they got rid of it was the advantage on initiative rolls. They didn't necessarily want you to have maybe. Um, and also probably because they're changing how surprise worked and surprise is now going to be quite a bit less surprise just gives you disadvantage on your initiative check now. So like the ignoring the surprise thing. Oh yeah. You literally couldn't because it's, it's not a status condition anymore. It's disadvantage on the check. So you couldn't the way the old mm. ability was worded, it wouldn't have even done anything. So, yeah, that gotcha. being said, they could have okay. reworked it in some fashion to be like, you can ignore surprise or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. True. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, what we get is good. It's not bad. Uh, for the record, it allows you to. It's it's called uh, instinctive move. pounce. And yes. so oh, it allows oh. you to move up to half your speed as part of the same bonus action you take while you rage. Yes, uh, which is helpful. Um, going back to the problem knowledge. Sorry, I forgot that D&D Beyond has the list right here. Uh, it says uh, making your barbarian uh, primal knowledge gives you skill proficiency from the barbarian list and the ability to replace certain skills with the strength modifier when rage is act. Oh, yeah. When your rage is active, the skills include acrobatics, intimidation, perception, stealth and survival. This means you can now fly into a rage and use your fury to sneak into places, perceive things more evilly, and do complex calisthenics. Talk <laughs> about all terrain rage. I see. I that was a fucking cheesy ass sentence they wrote there, but yeah. Uh so sneaky strength sneaking. Sneaking with strength. I don't I'm so jacked I'm sneaky. I don't know. It's a weird one. When you hard, you hard. <laughs> you hard, you hard. Uh, yeah. Then uh, next we have the big boy. The one that I don't like. Correct. Uh, yeah. You don't so, like? I like what they did. But so this is one of the things where I, I like what we got, but I for the record. So they, they replaced brutal critical. Yes. You no longer do extra damage when you crit. Yes. Brutal critical uh, is gone replaced and replaced with, by brutal strike. Yes, which allows you to trade off your advantage when you use your reckless attack to inflict more damage and debuff an ally when an enemy when you hit. You can only do this once per turn. Big thing. Now, I like Brutal Strike. I think it's a very cool ability. I still wanted and you do more damage when you crit. You know, I see. Yeah. Yeah, the more because damage that, it's, on a crit is fun. The, the argument of, oh, well, it doesn't happen much. Like for some people, it, it never it didn't really happen. Yes. Then you lose nothing by keeping it. If that's True. your reason for getting rid of it, you don't lose anything by keeping it. Or, you know what I mean? Or counter argument. Give the barbarian the champion a bit fighter thing where you crit on a 19. Oh, hard agree. Make them because crit like, let's be often. real. Whose niche protection are you infringing on the champion? <laughs> What yeah. niche protection? What yeah. do they do? Nothing. <laughs> Champion is Captain Vanilla the fighter. Like, yeah, you're not infringing. It doesn't deserve much. niche protection. Yeah, not really. I mean, I get. Yes, uh, it is technically the that is a thing that only Champion can do. And maybe they see that as a really powerful ability, I guess. I don't know. But like, yeah, I do see what you mean, though. Like, yeah, a little extra damage on crits is would still be fun to have there. Because it gets when you hit high level, when you hit level 20 and I just finished a and d style campaign where Brutal Critical was still a thing. When that fucker goes off at level 20. That oh, is like flat out orgasmic. You're just like number go bigger. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It do be big number. It's very fun. And I, I just feel like I do also like, though, that the brutal strikes are not just extra damage. They also are like status debuffs. Like the forceful yes, that, blow, that. you could send someone 15 feet away 
and then move your speed towards them without provoking opportunities and then hamstring blow. You can reduce the target speed. And then I think there's one you get later to like make them go prone or something like that. Yes, um, it is kind of like battle out. master maneuvers. Uh, yeah, they're like battle master light maneuvers. It is also worth pointing out that the brutal strikes do not take away. So you forego your advantage on the attack to do a brutal strike, but the uh, enemy still have his ha, still has advantage to beat your ass. Yes. So there is that. Which I do like. I mean, I like that we kept the risk it for the biscuit energy. Because it'd be kind of sad if they didn't. No, I agree. And I the, so the thing that that makes me not too upset about this, about losing the uh, or about right. The reason why I'm not quite bothered by the fact that you can only do the extra damage once per turn is because you also get the debuff and you yes. can do it whenever you want. Yes. So it, it to me, it's like, OK, if it was just damage, I'd want it every turn. If it was just debuff, I wouldn't be happy with it because as, as much as Barbarian is about tanking, it's also, you know, I, I would argue in some ways tied for best DPS in the game. Non-magical DPS. I'm um, pretty sure that's not true, but I'd just not go down this rabbit hole right now. Bar uh, Berserker, I, you get the extra attack, so you get three attacks per round, and then you get not the anymore, criticals, you know. and if you're reckless, you... No, I know, but you used to. I, 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 I don't know the math well enough to say, but sure. Um, yeah, like I said, it's good. I like it. Is it perfect? No, but I like it a lot. Okay. Uh, one thing I thought was great is that thing we were just talking about, Relentless Rage, now long no longer just puts you back to one HP. Uh, you get up to twice your Barbarian level uh, when you go down, which means at bare minimum you get twenty two hit points back. Yeah. Hell yeah, that's that's like just enough HP, even at that level, to let you take a hit or two and stay in the fight, especially I, if you're raging. Here's my problem with this: I don't think it is actually enough. I don't think it is actually enough health. <laughs> I I I don't think 22 HP is enough to stay up for a round. I think you're just going to immediately get bonked back into the dirt. <laughs> well, if you so I it would I guess it would depend on whether or not rage drops. So no, so because part you, of this you technically is, don't go unconscious. No, you, you don't. Pop and back so up. rage rage does not drop in this case. Um uh, you don't lose your rage until you're incapacitated and this ability, you aren't incapacitated. So, no, you don't lose your rage. You do still have it. I still don't feel like 22 is enough because at level 11, I think there's going to be enough magical horseshit coming your way that you're probably not going to be resisting it. And like, no, nah, I think you're, I think you're still going to get dunked in one turn. Maybe not, but I, st I don't know. The difference well, you have a better chance one than having one HP, that's for sure. You definitely have a better chance, but yeah, eh, I don't know. Eh. I feel like it should have been a little bit more health, but whatever. It's fine. I'll take it. It's not I mean, that it does big max a deal. Out at 40. It does max at 40, but at 40 at level 20 is like 40 at level 20 might as well be four. You know, like that's so little HP to the kind of bullshit you're fighting at level 20. But you only got to survive one Tarask bite, then you're good. <laughs> but you don't, because they you have multi-attack. you survive one, you have a chance. But they have multi-attack. They're going to bite you multiple times. They might, but they also might, you know, bully the nerd wizard. Maybe. Maybe. I guess if nothing else, you can get stomped on for your friends more than one time. Instead of and only, that's really what matters. Yeah, instead of only getting bit, you know, instead of only getting, you know, chomped by the Tarask once, you can get chomped by the Tarask like two times and then you've eaten up two of its attacks. OK, wait, hear me out. I love this idea for a character concept. You're a barbarian, but you only talk about things in Final Fantasy 14 terms. What? So like you go into a, 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 a den of goblins and you sprint in, but rather than screaming Leroy Jenkins, you're just like, big pulse, big pulse, big pulse. <laughs> Full room pulse. You just yeah. talk like an MMO character. Yeah. Wall to walls, baby, wall like, to you walls. Don't call your, yeah, you don't call it your fucking, uh, your, your primal pounce. You're like, gap closer, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking, uh, uh, what is it? 
the the fucking the the monster gets its its mythic uh, version, and you're like, guys, it's the enrage, it's the enrage, quick, it's the DPS check. <laughs> You're just looking at you like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> This is a uh, this is a weird bit, but okay. I, I someone please make this bit a thing. Just MMO barbarian. Bonus points if I can play in that game with you. <laughs> okay. What made you, what even made you think of that? I I I don't know. I I. <laughs> yeah. I guess because I I earlier this morning when I was doing like some research. Uh, there was a picture of Barbarian and I was I, for me I just turned my brain I was like oh that looks like Meteor in his like warrior form okay alright <laughs> sure hmm. uh, we so we kind of I don't want to say that we went backwards because this is kind of the it, technically it is it is on the box true impro- improved brutal strike uh-huh. It gives you it, so you don't do any extra damage, but you get two new options for the attacks. Yeah. Yes, it is technically an improved brutal strike, but I just feel like I expected it to do more damage, in the same way that I feel like I'm being misled with uh, improved divine smite. <laughs> it's not ex- it, yes, uh, but like no, you know what I mean. You just don't like the word improved being used there. Yeah, I look. I we got rid of it once. We can keep doing it. It's okay. Got rid of what? We got rid of it once. We can keep doing it. Okay. I mean, apparently not. Uh, yeah. Your two additional options with your brutal strike is staggering blow. You force your target to have v- disadvantage on the next saving throw it makes, and it can't make opportunity attacks till the start of your next turn. Uh, and then we have Sundering Blow. If you have the Martial, if you have a Martial Buddy fi- oh, god damn it. Uh, when you hit a creature with this ability, the next attack made by made against it by another creature has a plus five to hit. Essentially, you're trading off advantage and giving your buddy advantage. Yeah. Your big buff battle buddy. Yeah. Yes, you're giving your fighter, you're giving your champion fighter advantage so they have an even better chance of crit. Actually, it's not actually advantage. So that doesn't affect their crit chance in this case. Damn, damn. Yeah. I let, so let it be known. Uh, the thing the thing that I really like about these uh these extra abilities is that Mr. Crawford specifically said that you can use them in tandem with your with weapon, weapon mastery abilities. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I will say this is starting to make it, it barbarian is now going in a bit more of a complicated direction than it was before, which for some people may be a problem. But yes, uh, I wrote that in my notes where I, I, I specifically said, I, I don't know necessarily if it's a good thing if we're making barbarian more complicated when we uh, as we've said many times, barbarian is sort of meant to be the easiest class in the game to play, the simplest class, it does one thing and one thing really well, it eats damage. Uh, Making it more complicated is a little counterintuitive. It does a little bit, but uh, arguably almost every class got more complicated. It did, yes. The D&D is just becoming a slightly crunchier game again. Yeah, pretty much. Hopefully, I mean... So... Yeah. I think we're still in the realm of a reasonable amount of crunchy nonsense. I don't think we've crested the chaos quite yet. You know? Yeah. But, uh, you, you know, every time you brush up against it, you get a little more questionable. Hmm. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Maybe, maybe people won't care. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, we've said it before as well, like the the mythical little brother does not exist and should not be used as a metric for playing the game. But I wouldn't say it doesn't exist, but it was perhaps given a little more weight than it should have been. Yeah. I, it does exist to uh, a certain degree. There are people who just don't fucking read, as we've established a couple of times with these class videos. Oh, baby. Uh, I'm dealing with that right now, actually, in my campaign. 
Yeah. I mean, sometimes people just do not fucking read. It is just nah. how it goes. It do that way. Uh, it hurts, me. It hurts me so much. Just read your sheet. Read your sheet. It's not hard. Just do it. Read your no. fucking sheet. I just wanna... Do me as the dungeon master a favor. I so just I wanna roll. Don't have to. I just wanna roll yeah. clicky clacks and you tell me everything that I do. Look, that would be fine if I wasn't being texted by people 15 minutes before session while I'm madly trying to gather my notes together. No, hey, no. what does this do? No, no, Isaiah, no, no. I want you to know the entire game for me and my sheet and my build. Please. No. I said please. I said no. <laughs> All right, persistent rage. <laughs> yes. Uh, Persistent rage. Once per long rest, you regain all uses of your rage when you roll initiative and you have none. Let's fucking go, gamers. Use that rage as much as you want. As soon as you, you know, once you have 15th level. I'm gonna be honest. Or at least once per long rest. I don't know that this really mattered. Like, most people are not playing the game in such a fashion where they're doing enough fights in a day that this matters at all anyway. But, sure. True. You know? True. I mean, I, I also feel like we'll talk about this in a second, but the reason why I like um, Berserker so much, even in its original incarnation, is because I feel like as a barbarian, you shouldn't be raging every single fight. Like, if you're fighting kobolds, you probably don't need to rage, right? They're probably right. not putting yeah. out enough damage to actually hurt you. So rage is when a fight gets difficult. And the way... And, you know, I guess some spoilers for what I was going to talk about before. The way that you circumvent the, the exhaustion thing for Frenzy is that you use Frenzy during boss fights, which is typically the end of a day anyway. Yeah. And then it feels like a cool sickle mode. Yeah. So I, I agree. It, it does nothing, really. Um, kind of a nothing burger ability. It's cool to have, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, your rage lasts 10 minutes and you don't need to extend it in any way when you get the Relentless Rage ability, which I feel like is probably the more important part of this ability. Yes. Uh, also, the fact that you get a rage back on short rest is also making it so you don't need this as much. Yeah, I don't know. It feels like a little extra slap on the ass, but nothing too exciting. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Improved Brutal Strike. Again? See... This time it actually makes sense. Yeah. Your Brutal Strike does more damage and you get more shit. I find this very weird that they called it the same ability twice. Yeah, I mean, I agree. They couldn't have called it like further improved or extra damage Brutal Strike or like, or I don't know, or call the level 13 one like Brutal Strike options. I don't, like that's a terrible name, but you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, or like, you know, primal tech, like primal maneuvers, primal techniques, something. whatever you want to call it. Uh, yes, this one, yeah. Reckless Bru Tactics? There you go. Reckless Damn, that's tactics. a banger. There you go. I want my pay Wizards, I want my paycheck by Monday. <laughs> uh, improved brut Brutal Strike at level 17. Yes, it increases the damage from a D10 to a 2D10, the extra damage you deal, which, hey, hey, Wizards, why didn't you let Hunter's Mark turn into a 2D6 for the Ranger? That'd be crazy, huh? Um, yeah. Wild. <laughs> and uh, it lets you inflict two different brutal strike effects on the target at the same time, plus your weapon mastery, which means a level 17 barbarian can cause three debuffs on one target, which is a little weird. Kind of wild. Just a bit. And not what I think of when I think of barbarian, but, you know, sure. Okay. Okay. Now, as far as I'm aware, I don't think we know what the full on capstone ability we do. Is. It's the same thing. Is it is the same thing? It's the same thing. Yes. I don't know why they didn't put it in the article on D&D Beyond, but it is the same thing. Crawford mentioned it. People in videos have mentioned it. It's the same. The only difference yeah. is the cap is 25 instead of 24 for the strength for whatever reason. Do you still get the plus four as well? I That was that because you used that, to get plus four. That is the understanding that I am under, yes. 
that it is the okay. same ability. That is what that is what the same means. All right. I mean, Capstone still sucks balls, but yes, correct. You used to get that plus four. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And uh, level 19, you get your epic boon. They recommend the boon of irresistible offense. Uh, you get the ability to overcome resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage with your attacks. When you roll a 20 on the die for an attack roll, you get to deal damage equal to the ability score they use to make the attack, which will likely be at least 25 when you gain access to Primal Champion at level 20. So, yeah. That's the recommended epic boon. That's barbarian. Oh no, we didn't do subclasses. Subclasses. I mean, not a whole lot to talk about. The subclasses. Frenzy. Uh, for berserker, frenzy yeah, well, no longer takes exhaustion. I feel like we need to. Uh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause, pause. I feel like you need. Yeah, we got to address this a little. You just went in there raw. There was no lube on that or nothing. Like goddamn. Much like a berserker. Yes, path of the berserker is still in there. Uh, Frenzy basically isn't really a thing anymore. Like, there's no, like, two-stage... Because Frenzy used to be a second rage, like a upgraded rage. It is not that anymore. You just... You just rage. Was it not? I, I believe they still, they still talk about Frenzy. It just no longer takes exhaustion from you. No, they... I'm pretty sure they call it Frenzy, but it's still not, like, an upgraded rage. Because what's the point of it being an upgraded okay. rage if it doesn't um, well, have a way, downside? It, Right, like, doesn't the upgraded version was a choice because you had to take a downside for it. But if there's no downside, then you would just take the upgraded version every single time. So, true. Mind as well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, whatever frenzy is, it no longer uh, gives exhaustion. It deals one, uh, more damage once per turn on a reckless strike, and it allows you to gain retaliate at level ten rather than fourteen. Which, I mean, good. Like, Retaliate is such a cool idea, but no one's getting to level 14. Uh, oh. oh, and Mindless uh, mindless Rage ends Charmed or Frightened. Yep. Pretty sick. Basically, uh, Berserker got pumped up, like, sort of across the board. Yes. Um, I keep doing that fucking um thing. It's killing me. And... Uh, yeah, the bonus damage is a number of D6s equal to your rage bonus. Once a turn, you don't gain the exhaustion. The retaliation thing is earlier. Also, intimidating presence now affects multiple creatures in an area around you, and it Everybody. lasts up for a min minute. So it's actually a much more useful ability. Basically, a berserker just got better across the board, unless you really liked the idea of that extra attack. That's, Did you lose uh, yeah. the extra attack? Yeah. Bruh. Yeah, it doesn't give you a bonus action attack. It gives you the extra damage. You know. That's what I'm saying. You know, because Crawford was like, the whole point of the third attack is to give you extra damage. So let's just give you extra damage on your normal attacks because that's what the third attack was doing anyway. And it's going to actually be slightly more damage because it's a number of D6 is equal to your raged bonus damage. So it starts at 2D6 and then goes up. So it's going to be more yeah, damage. But, uh, yeah, but the third attack gives you a higher chance to crit. It does. And I get, I guess they're not, you know, critting. But you don't have, it? yeah, you don't, critting doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Basically, no, no crit builds in 5e allowed. Dreams. Yeah, I I do wish there was somebody that you could like there was some way to really lean into crits. It's a little sad you can't. Uh, but yeah. Aim. Aim deep in my peco. Uh, I really didn't know about that that missing third attack. <laughs> how how did you not did you not read? I did, I just must have missed it. Now, comma, instead of giving you an extra bonus attack, you get an additional damage on your first hit each turn. I did. Okay, sir, I missed it. I'm sorry. All right, well, read more carefully. I was prepping for two classes. Leave me alone. <laughs> Didn't we just talk about reading? Uh, we did, and we're about to talk about it again, actually. <laughs> All right. 
uh, Wild Heart. Um, basically, you are not locked in to the animal choice when you level up. So like for originally the way it worked was you level up, you pick the animal. That's it. You're you're stuck with that. So you hit level three, you pick bear, you're bear forever. You hit level three, you pick wolf, you're wolf forever. Now, every time you rage, you get to pick one of those animal spirits. Uh, so, you know, uh, oh, there's a lot of enemies around. I'm going to rage and pick bear. Oh, there's this one nerd that we're trying to beat up like one boss. I'm going to rage and pick wolf to give everybody extra damage. So you pick it every time and they have added uh, they they took away a couple of the early options that were basically useless, like tiger and elk that nobody chose because one gave you movement speed and one made you jump better, which like who the fuck cares about jumping? Um, and they also changed the names of all the animals so that it is very obvious that you do not have to pick the same animal every time because apparently, according to Crawford, and this is, I, bro, this is, drives, this is a great example of nobody can read. Uh, yeah, just zero media literacy. People thought that if you picked whatever animal you picked at level three, you had to pick that same animal as you leveled up with the with the totem warrior. So if you picked bear at level three, you had to pick bear again at level six or seven or whatever it is, and then bear again for your third choice. Like you couldn't mix and match, but you could always mix and match. People just don't read. How <laughs> motherfuckers just don't read. Yeah. So now they have different names for each one. So you can't do that. You can't fuck that up because they're all every single option is a different animal. So now if you can't read, I we just I no one can save you, I guess. Yeah, you, you are a lost cause. I love that salmon is a spirit. Now. Salmon. Yeah, <laughs> I did think salmon was I, like, a funny one. Like you gave you, like I get it. You know, it's like Women. salmon are some of the strongest swimmers, but like yeah. you couldn't call it like swordfish or like shark, shark. Uh, yeah salmon, salmon. <laughs> i'm a salmon spirit barbarian <laughs> yeah. i want someone to look at you and be like dork um <laughs> i swim really good leave me alone the only thing i'm a little unclear about with totem warrior is so you select the the bonuses when you rage do you select them from each level so like if you're a level three barbarian right or sorry, if you're a level six barbarian, then you have your level three feature from your subclass and your level six feature. When you rage, do you get to pick the level three one and the level six one? Or do you just get a bigger list to choose from? Unclear on I, that. So I, based on the way that it was described in the video, I believe you get to choose both. I would hope so. That would make more sense. And that's basically how it worked before. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, because he said you, you get two abilities that you get to choose every time you rage. So that makes me think that you're you're adding another ability. OK. OK, good. That's what I was hoping for. Yeah. And then so, you get um, you get one third ability that you choose once per day. Ah, OK. Um, yeah, I mean. I'm very happy with Wildheart. I think that's a great change because that makes Totem Barbarian quite a bit more interesting because boy, was that subclass not very exciting before, but mechanically very strong. Yeah, perfect example of on paper, unstoppable in flavor. Uh, yeah, so much more fun. Everyone just picks bear and yeah. everyone is a Kalistar bear barbarian and are yep. resistant to all damage. Yep. So much more fun now. So I'm pretty happy about that. Path of the World Tree. How how you feel about this one? Um, I like what they were going for. I don't like I it. Do I like the idea? The like straight up support barbarian. That's cool. Sure. What we've seen for it so far. Uh. Like, I like that you get to heal people. You can give yourself. temporary hit points and move people around and teleport people. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. Maybe not doesn't fit so well with Barbarian. Uh, I don't know. I, I like the idea, but maybe not the execution. Personally, what I wanted was Beast, like Beast Barbarian, where you kind of mutate into an animal person. But they kind of just rolled that into Wildheart because you 
get the thing that we literally asked for, which is just pick which thing you want every time you rage. Uh, yeah. I mean, also you could still play Beast Barbarian. You can, yeah. Still on um, the table. I just it's that one that it, it, I'm that guy where it's like, oh, I wanted giant barbarian, or I I wanted wild magic, and I'm out here like Beast Barbarian. Yeah, I'm just the one person in the crowd. That's I me. like Beast Barbarian. I'm a fan of Beast. I, I, yeah, I don't know. The Path of the World Tree. Uh, I don't even, first of all, I don't know that we necessarily needed a new subclass of Barbarian, but Path of the World Tree, thematically, I'm just not that interested in the tree barbarian. Like, I know it's the, like, Yggdrasil thing, but, like, I don't know, whatever. I'm, that's doesn't, that's not that exciting to me. Uh, and mechanically, while it does sound pretty good, it doesn't sound particularly exciting in terms of I'm a barbarian, you know, like in comparison to Path of the Zealot, like I'm God's holy, angry Avenger. Like, come on, you know, like what, what well, sounds so, cool? You know what, what sounds cooler? I'm the guy who takes care of the tree and trims the fucking and prunes the leaves or I'm God's angry Jesus Avenger. Like, you know, I'm just saying, you know, so I don't disagree with you. The thing that made me laugh was I expected before we had learned about uh, the, the tree one, I expected wild magic to be that because that's what we got in Baldur's Gate. And I figured that that's what they were going to be teeing off of. Uh, Yeah, it is a little weird that we didn't get wild magic. It's true. Um, Zealot. A little strange. Yeah, uh, Zealot. Uh, basically the only thing that they kind of they took away was they took away Rage Beyond Death because that ability was a little silly. Um, so now I really liked it. It's a cool ability, but it was a little OP. Or, uh, sorry, not Rage Beyond Death. The one that lets you just ignore components for bringing someone back. Oh, Warrior of the Gods. Yeah, I, I love that ability. That had really interesting and really cool flavor of like, yeah, no, the gods chose me. They're not going to charge you to bring me back. I just I'm just going to keep fighting and die. you just become Saint Celestine from 40K. I thought that was awesome. And yeah. then Mr. Crawford was like, no, nah, I don't like those kinds of abilities. I'm like, what, dude? Yeah. What the fuck do you mean? That's sick. I feel like they could have kept it as a ribbon ability, but whatever. I don't know. I yeah. guess. I mean, it, that's very easy to flavor back into your game, like super easy. So fuck it yeah you just say that it happens it's just like oh weirdly uh, enough it doesn't cost any diamonds to bring jim the zealot yeah. back now now warrior of the gods ability gives you a, a pool of healing dice that you can use as a bonus action you basically get like a second wind um and then ray uh rage beyond death uh what is it basically makes you a sicko mode if i remember correctly right uh yeah rage beyond death uh gives you a, or no sorry now it's called rage of the gods uh, gives you a fly speed, damage resist, and the ability to expend a use of your, a, your rage to prevent you and your comrades from dropping to zero HP. You basically get like a God shows me sicko mode and fucking sprout angel wings and go. Ooga, ooga, ooga. You so, know what makes me really sad? What? Is that. It's just the paladins engines capstone ability, but like three levels earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah. Kinda, yeah. I was Zealot the knockoff Vengeance Barbarian, Vengeance Paladin, but got the coolest Vengeance ability earlier. Yeah. Shafted. Absolutely Ooh. shafted. A, a little bit, yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny. I never I never thought of, I don't know why, I never really considered Zealot Barbarian, but Zealot Barbarian's pretty sick, actually. No, Zealot Barbarian's awesome. I've just never had a good enough character concept to an make An idea one. for it? Yeah, I never had an idea for it either. Uh, Reman was a Zilla Barbarian. Oh, yeah, that's right. Now that's Barbarian. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I have almost... I have... I have basically no complaints other than I don't think World Tree is very exciting. <laughs> it's pretty yeah, much... Yeah, it's a little... It's, I, I don't even know that I, I don't consider it exciting. It just feels a little, like, out of pocket and like the actual meaning of the word out of pocket like it just doesn't kind of fit <laughs> you know not the way that a lot of people use it you know what i think my other issue with world tree is is that i just when i read what when i hear what it can, what its abilities are and i look at the name path of the world tree i don't get like a cool character idea like 
most of the subclasses in the game I can look at and go, oh, I could play this kind of character or that kind of character. Like, that would be a fun premise. I don't have any kind of like, I don't look at that and go, oh, yeah, I could play this tree guy who's really into trees. Like, I, I just don't like I, I would just if I want to play a guy who's really into trees, I'm just going to play a druid. Like, I don't, you know, I so I. Yeah, I mean, I my thought immediately is 40k wolf priest, like a like a space marine Fenrisian wolf priest. I don't know what the fuck that is, but sure. They're the they're the psychers for the space wolves. Oh, okay. And they they do very similar things where they're they're kind of like battle support, but they they can also summon like cool fucking spectral snow wolves and shit. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure somebody looked at that and had a bunch of ideas uh, based on you know the actual stories of Yggdrasil, like ways that you could come up with a cool Nordic inspired barbarian, but. Yeah, it just did nothing for me. I just kind of looked at it and was like, all right. I feel like if I were to play... Fair enough. Yeah, I don't... Of the four? I don't know. I'm sort of between oh, Zealot and Wildheart. Me, I mean, yeah, I know it's Berserker for you. I'm between Zealot and Wildheart of the 2024 Barbarians. I think... still really like Wild Magic and Beast, though. TBH. I look, I love Beast has has some of the coolest flavor because I, I always imagine it as the like full hollow Ichigo, like you spout like bone constructs, which kind of like Kimaru from Naruto. That to me, that's Beast Barbarian. I know it's supposed to be like more of like lycanthropic, but yeah, we already have enough lycanthrope shit. Do we? I don't think we do, actually. I think we could use more. Well, we have like the shit. shifter race. We've got like actual lycanthropy. I, I don't know. Nah, but we don't have any lycanthrope subclasses, really. Should count Blood Hunter. I suppose not. I, I mean, I do count Blood Hunter, but I know it's not okay. A, although it should be. Uh, yeah. Barbarian. Now we're going to draft it, drastically shift. Well, it's not that drastic, I guess. I don't know. Monk. <laughs> the other puncher. Yeah, pretty much. The other person most likely to turn your skull into, like, strawberry jam Ooh. with him fucking fists. Uh, mm. Fists. <laughs> I think the biggest, yeah, the, the biggest thing for Monk that I wanted, that everyone wanted, that the world wanted, really, was that martial arts is just better across the board. It is just It's better. actually quite solid now. Yes. Amongst it's... the myriad things that martial arts can do, it, it it makes all simple weapons and all martial weapons with the light property monk weapons. It makes your starting martial arts die a D6 rather than a D4 and bumps and it. Goes it, or it maxes out at a D12 yep. rather than D10. Fuck yes. Once Kensei comes back, spoiler, Kensei's not in the four subclasses. Sub it should be, I know, but it's not. Once it does come out, you can go so whole hog on Kensei. You can yeah. actually play a sword saint, like Kensei actually fucking means. It's gonna be so cool, dude. It lets you replace your strength with dex when it comes to grappling, which is also pretty cool. Gra I mean, yes, and grappling also got reworked how it functions. So uh, oh, I didn't yeah. hear that. Interesting. Yeah, grappling is part of like a it's like a special action that's part of an attack or, or uh, I forget exactly what it was, but grappling got reworked a little bit so that it's potentially going to be used more. I mean, maybe not, but we'll see. I hope so. Look, I I want that green text of Los Tiburon, the shark of the land to like become a thing <laughs> that's just regularly done. Um, Yeah, I mean, yeah, martial arts just just better now. Uh, you can also unarmed attack as a bonus action. Period. You don't have uh, to like. I believe it. that was already a thing. No, because the way it worked before was you have to make an attack and then use your bonus action after the attack to make the to make the bonus action attack. Oh, now you can just throw one out. As now a bonus you action. can throw it out as a bonus action and do something else with your. So the way it wor was worded. Old, uh, current 2014 martial arts. When you use your attack action, 
with an unarmed strike mm. or a monk weapon on your turn, you can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action. Now it is, you can make a bonus action unarmed strike. End of discussion. Copy. So you could just punch more easily. More punch. Punch more. Much punch. So much, much punch. punch. Much punch. Oh, yes. Something worth mentioning. I, I spoiled it a little earlier. He has been replaced with focus. Focus points. So you no longer burn key points. You burn focus points. They are mechanically the same thing. They are mechanically the same thing. I don't like... I like key points. I like the idea of key. Uh, this feels like a weird retroactive reactionist change the same way that Totem Barbarian was, but I care about this slightly. I don't understand why you care about this one slightly more. It's the same thing. <laughs> I Because I do. Leave me alone. Okay. I do. I, anyway, I what are we doing the, with the our focus The points? cool thing about focus abilities is that each focus ability as standard is free now. Yeah. So the things that they originally did, so like patient defense allowing you to uh well, disengage. No. Yeah, so patient defense used to give you a dodge. Or no dodge. Or a disengage. Uh or no, no, one no, no, key no, point. You were right. No, one key point to dodge as a bonus action. You were right. Dodge. Doesn't it also give you disengage? That's step of the wind. Step of the wind, okay. Step of the wind. Uh, so the old abilities were Flurry of Blows, which is you get an extra attack, um, which is, uh, I believe, the same. Um, yeah, Flurry of Blows is the same. You can get basically a third attack. Uh, patient Defense was you could spend a key point to take the dodge action as a bonus action. Step of the Wind was you could t spend a key point to take the disengage or dash action as a bonus action, and your dump jump distance is doubled. Now... Uh, patient defense. Excuse me. Uh, oh, now patient defense lets you take the disengage action uh, as a bonus action for free. If you spend a focus point, you can take the disengage and dodge action. Uh, you can take disengage and dodge as the same bonus action. That's what patient defense is. Now. Okay, so it is simultaneous. That's the new version. I was gonna is, say not the old one. The, the new, new one, one is. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Likewise, yeah, right. so that that was something that was kind of confusing me is the wording is not super clear. Well, I mean, this isn't the book wording, so I know. I know. Well, th th that's what you we were saying before. Right? The wording that we have access to is not super clear, but I uh, felt like that's what they were. Saying. And then step of the wind allows you to take the dash as a bonus action for free. If you spend a key point, you can dash and disengage at the same time as a bonus action. So basically, you have the free version and then the upgraded version spending a focus point. Um, which, quite frankly, because rogues could already do this with cunning action, it, it was a little silly that monks couldn't do those same things for free. So now they can. Yes. Now they can and they can add, they can choose to upgrade them to make them better. Yes. Which is great. Which is good and the kind of thing that I would want focus points to do. Makes sense. Yes, and it allows you to the, the thing that that uh, I, I was going to come up with a dumb nickname. No, uh, what Mr. Crawford said. Crawford's was that, in sports mode. Ooh, I fucking hate that one. <laughs> That's an old one. I, I just reused that one. I don't remember it, and I feel like I must have deleted it from my fucking <laughs> no, memory I, banks. I, I believe wow, I said that, that one in the palette bad. video. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude! That just blew my my train of thought into pieces. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! I did. I didn't. Anyway, I, yeah. What the fuck was I talking? I don't know. About? Something about patient. Something about focus points and you know, oh yes. Them. One of the complaints that people had was that they were burning through their key points way too fast. So, in one of the myriad ways to combat that, they basically just said. The base version of these you get for free, for free yeah. and you can upgrade them. If you're wondering, there is no upgrade version of Flurry of Blows because the new paunch for bonus action is technically standard Flurry of Blows. And what we know as Flurry of Blows is the upgraded version. 
basically. So the Flurry of Blows is pretty much the same because Flurry of Blows lets you attack three times in a turn. Flurry of Blows has always let you do that. However, because you now have this bonus action attack situation where you don't need to attack with the irregular action first, you just have more flexibility into how you can utilize Flurry of Blows. That's really all it is. You still cap out at three attacks in the early levels. So, yeah. Uh, but then, also, speaking actually of the focus point situation and running out of points, uh, Uncanny Metabolism, uh, you regain all expended focus points when you roll initiative once per long rest. And when you use yep. this feature, you regain hit points equal to your monk level plus a roll of your martial arts die. So even less of a problem of, I, oh, no, I have no key points. You're 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 good. You have plenty of key points now. No more complaining. You will have, plenty. You will have so let's assume that you take a sh one short rest per day at level 20. You will have 60 focus points. Yeah, yeah. To use. 60. That is fucking insane, dude. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, you know how many wax you're gonna put out in So <laughs> much whack. You're just gonna be an absolutely ballistic bionicle. Hell yeah. Have you seen I, it? Bionicles making a weird resurgence? I. They're not making any more Bionicles, but like people are just like, remember Bionicles? Remember that one time where they used an All-American Rejects song for their season four release? I, I, no, but okay. You don't remember they used Move Along by the All-American Rejects for uh for the fourth era of Bionicle Toa Anika? I, I do. Don't not. ask why I remember that perfectly. <laughs> I, I do not remember that, no. Crazy. Okay. How about the new deflect attacks, though? <laughs> deflect attacks is sick as fuck, dude. It doesn't Correct. it does not only range attacks anymore. It's all its incoming attacks that use physical damage. You can deflect that shit and punch someone in the face for yeah, force you, damage. Yeah, this is so fucking sick. dude. You can do the you could do the sick Jackie Chan fucking like block fist with, you know, cutting board and then jab you in the nose. <laughs> yeah, you just become Eatmon. You yes. just you're yeah. now just a Wing Chun master. Yes basically and then eventually later down the line it becomes deflect energy where you can redirect fire bolts and shit being shot at you so you can just like dbz fucking magic energy nonsense so i can't wait yeah. for for all of the the gojo miguel reenactments to happen yeah um I, I forget. I think it's also they changed the way the damage bit worked. Uh, damage is reduced by a D10 plus your dex modifier and monk level. And if you reduce that damage to zero, you can use a focus point to redirect the attack. Uh, depending if the attack was ranged or melee, you can target a creature within five feet or 60 feet, respectively, and force them to make a saving throw against damage based on your martial arts die and your dex mod. Oh, yeah. It mechanically a little fiddly, I think, with how that's people. It's going to take people a minute to figure out how it works. But I feel like Monk already had that problem or deflect attacks already deflect missiles already had that problem originally. So, you know, whatever. Yes, it was always a little noodly, correct? It's a little noodly. Yeah. Uh, As for the subclasses, we currently have the warrior. They're no longer called ways. You have Warrior of Mercy, Warrior of Shadows, Warrior of the Four Elements, and Warrior of the Open Hand. Uh, how could you do my boy Kensei like this? I'm not You know what? This is going to the Book of Grudges. I'm this is going to the Book of Grudges. I'm not surprised. I think the more important I think the more important statement is what about Ascendant Dragon and Astral Self? Fair enough. I want to play Common Rider slash a JoJo character and yeah. a cool dragon summoner. Yeah. Uh Actually, I think the more important thing is, what the fuck do you mean Quivering Palm no longer reduces the target to zero hit points? What? I, all right, my guy, let's be honest. Quivering Palm was ridiculous. All right, let's not. But here's the thing. I agree with people that Monk was not that good and Open Hand was not that good of a subclass. But the thing that made it really cool 
was your sick insta kill move. Yes. But it's still not. I mean, it's still pretty good. It is still 10 D12 force damage. It is, but like a lot. <laughs> That's potentially 120 damage. It. it is. Yeah, you're going to you're typically going to average out at, let's see, at a D12, the Somewhere average damage the is 60s. seven. So, yeah, you're going to do about 70 damage. That's pretty good on average. It is. It is pretty good. I just wanted more damage. I just wanted instant down. I uh, I don't know. I I'm a, I'm all right with it. I'm not that bothered. The f the f like the flavor of this like hard fought fight against an ancient dragon. You've burned all of its legendary resistances. It's still got 200 hit points. Everyone in the party is down, and then you catch the dragon with a quivering palm, and it fails. And you pull the W from the jaws of death. That's such a cool thought. Uh, they, I mean, yeah, I, they did still have to make the con save too. It did. That's why I said, assuming in that miraculous moment where it fails. Yeah. And even if it didn't, it's still doing that a bunch of damage. Remember, it was either instant down or a bunch of damage. Yeah. Less damage though than D10. Close to D12s. True. True. I don't know. I'm fine with it. I still feel betrayed. Speaking of things they that me thing, things that maybe got a little sort of nerf, stunning strike. Uh, yeah, uh, kind of. It kind of got a it little got nerfed. Side, it got side. Yeah, it got side side adjusted. Yeah. So, stunning strike requires a monk weapon or unarmed strikes. Uh, same as before, and it lasts until the start of your next turn rather than yep. the end. Let, yep. So this is actually a buff, and I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> okay. The way it used to work was that creatures would lose the stun at the end of your turn. Yeah. Which means you could not re-stun them on your turn because you can't stack debuffs like that. You can't stack True. a stun on a stun. True. Which would say you would potentially get the extra hit in, but you couldn't stun them. Now, in theory, you can go for the stun every single turn. And... True. Even if you don't get the stun off, the next the uh, for the next turn, the start of your next turn, the enemy has half uh, their speed is halved, and you have advantage on the next hit you make on them. Yes, that's pretty solid. The caveat being you can only do it once per turn, which you know it is a little bit worse. But the reason why I like this more than, say, Divine Strike is that, again, it gives you other things. It, it also gives you Consolation. Oh, you didn't get it? That's all right, man. Yeah, I mean, the Consolation is nice. That was the thing. See, for me, I the little bit I played Monk, I did not want <clears throat> to use Stunning Strike at all because if it failed, you just went wah wah, wasted turn. Yeah, you know, like and it felt but so to shitty fair, you, to you fail. got three chances to do it. D did you? Yeah, because if you you can stunning strike on a flurry. Yeah, I guess you technically did. I don't know. I just didn't like the fact that if you <coughs> if you if it failed, you just were like, LOL, Lamau, I am sad. Nothing happened, you know, like so the consolation prize bit is what makes me feel happy about that one. What I am curious about is, does it work? Because you can only do it once per turn. Yeah. Is it like Divine Strike, where you can proc Divine it on a Smite, hit? Divine Smite, my guy. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Is it like Divine Smite, where you can proc it on a hit, or do you have to declare it before? Uh. I don't think they specified that. Did they? Doesn't specify in the article. How did it work before? Um, you had to declare and when, burn the point. No, you didn't. When you hit another creature. Oh. Yeah. So probably still on hit, I would guess. I would hope so. I would assume so. You hit, you spent one key point to attempt a stunning strike. 
So, yeah. Uh, and then anyway, have, level five gives you force damage, baby. It does give you force damage, yes, because Fuck this magical damage, yeah. this this esoteric magic damage, you just get force damage, baby. Yeah, and you can toggle it. You can toggle it back to bludgeoning. That is so sick. Yeah, which I I don't know why you would, but I guess maybe. Uh, in the instance where you fight the weird spider that is immune to bludgeoning to, to force damage. Oh, or the or the um, suit of arm, the anim not animated armor, but the other one, the hol helm tar helm tar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It seems like across the board we're just removing the idea of magical damage, which I'm fine with. It was dumb. It yeah. it it didn't. It was vague and esoteric and wasn't clear on what the fuck it meant. So. Honestly, they probably should have just put a magical damage type, like a type of damage that was just called like ethereal damage or something like that. Um, but I guess that's just what they're using force as now anyway. So whatever, fine. Well, I, I kind of like the idea that you had two versions of each damage. So you had mundane slashing and magical slashing. And I know you kind of do, but they don't call it that. You know what I mean? They don't they don't. There's no proper noun for it. There isn't no. Um, and then it jumps from level five to level 10, which I'm a little, con I mean, level eight yeah, ASI, yeah. but like six, seven, nine, what, what's going on with those? Don't worry about it. Is that a typo? I, 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 I don't, don't know. know. I don't know either. I'm a little confused. What's going on at levels six, seven and nine? I mean, six, you get a monk, you get a monastic tradition or I guess a warrior feature, they're going to call it. But like level seven, you got evasion. Oh, true. Do you just not get evasion anymore? Yeah, like I don't I would assume you. I don't see any reason why you wouldn't. Maybe they just fucked up and forgot to mention those. Oh, maybe they didn't put it in this article because they're unchanged. I can see that we've seen stuff like that in previous um, articles. There's not the consistency amongst these articles is a little all over the place. Yeah, yeah, it's a little annoying, but a little bit because uh, it's basically a newsletter. You'd want accurate information. Yeah. So either way, we get a uh, heightened focus at level 10. Oh, we got extra attack at level five. Also, I don't know if we still get extra attack and key empowered strikes was level six. Now it's level five. Do, do we not get extra attack anymore? But ah, uh, that's a good question. I feel uh, like we should, because you used to be able to max out at four punches previously. So the fact that you would lose them now. Yeah, like maybe you do. I don't know. That's a good question. I hope not for sure. So, yes, as we were saying, uh, not quite sure if Monk still gets that extra attack, but here's hoping. I would be I would be surprised if they did it. I yeah, one would hope. But the, you know, this. <laughs> This class has been such a dub so far that I'm I'm sort of like waiting for something to rear its ugly head. <laughs> I just I, feel like Wizards has let me down so much that even this thing that is like a universal dub is like. Uh -uh. I don't see I don't any. Think so. I don't see any reason that they would get rid of extra attack. Like, I don't even know what the point of that would be. So, like. I think we're fine. I hope. Up next, we get heightened focused. Focused? Fuck. We get heightened focus, uh, which improves all focus abilities. Uh, I don't believe I actually listed them out in my notes, so I'm going to have to check now. Flurry of blows. Patient oh, yes. Flurry of blows of gives wind. you a third attack. Oh, that might actually be why you don't get an extra attack. Wait. Flurry of Blows giving you an extra punch, which puts your oh. punches to four at that. Oh, Flurry of Blow. The first Flurry of Blows gains an additional attack, bringing the total 
do three per bonus act. Three per bonus action. Yeah, you get three flurry blow punches. How would it be? Th- oh, because of the, the the first free one is considered a flurry of blow punch. Yeah, that's. A, I hmm. always I always think of the offhanded free one as part of martial arts, but yeah, I guess I see what they're saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so maybe we don't get extra attack anymore. I okay, but I wouldn't hate that if you get a fourth uh, on the flurry of blow. Like it, it makes flurry of blows more cool because it goes from one extra punch to two, and now you're getting three as opposed to one. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Patient events now grants you temp HP based on two rolls of your martial arts die, which is this one I'm not a huge fan of because this is just the the key healing that you got from yeah, Tasha's. It is. It is um yeah yeah pretty much uh granted it's gonna be pretty solid at this level you're gonna be getting 2d8 or 2d probably 2d8 level 10 uh yeah quickened healing so So in tasha's you got level four uh quickened healing as an action spend two key points and roll a martial arts die you regain number of hit points equal to the roll plus your provision yeah so yeah it is kind of that uh, Although a bit better, a bit better. The healing won't be great because it's temp HP, but True. it is what it is. Uh, and then finally, when you step of the wind, you can also move a willing creature uh, size large or smaller with you at the uh, to, until the end of your turn. And I don't believe it costs you extra move. You also don't provide uh, provoke opportunity. It's cool. I. I, I mean, this one is fun, but also like thematically. What what is the justification for this? They're like, come, let me hold my hand, hold my monkey hand and you will get my monkey dodging powers as we weave between the enemies. I I just like to think that you just tuck them under your shoulder like a footballer. I You know, that's very not monk, but maybe. No, but it's really fun. <laughs> it's maybe. really funny when you think about it. Mayhaps. No. After that, at level 10, you also get self-restoration, which allows you to avoid levels of exhaustion uh, without food or water. This is the one This is we also talked about this last time where you can just ignore eating or sleeping now. Yeah, you already kind of could, because I, I think with Monk, your sleep is. Uh... Didn't you get like a like a elf kind of style trance? When you tried to sleep. Um, was not a thing. No, you got purity no. of body. Uh, you're immune to disease and poison. That might uh, be. Weird. I don't know. Oh, tireless way, body. You don't age. Oh, that might be what I'm thinking about. Uh, so either way, with with this, you do still need to sleep, but you can just completely no, you, oh, ignore. Sorry. You don't you don't suffer the frailty of old age and can't be aged magically. You still die of old age, though. So. Oh, and yes, you no yes, longer yes. need food and water. Yeah, tireless body. Yeah, I, I kind of just like the idea that the, the the ranger's like, I have good berry. And you're like, I do not need your good berry. Yeah, yeah, I'm too cool. I do I not need, need your magical handouts, ranger. I need no sustenance. Although, can we just so your level 15 ability is a 2014 monk is you can't be magically aged and you don't suffer the frailty of old age and you no longer need food or water. That's basically a nothing. You got a nothing burger at level 15. Yeah, yeah. I... At least avoiding levels of exhaustion is like kind of something. And then the ending, the, the conditions is useful. So, yeah, that's kind of funny. Yeah, it, it is just better across the board. And you get it five levels earlier. Funny. Yes. Sir. Uh, level 13, you get deflect energy, which now is your deflect attacks on all damage types. Fucking sick. Uh, I believe it it's doesn't. It's never ha- going to happen. Wait, I had. Is this limited to targeted attacks? Yes, I was just about to say. Okay, that. I just love the idea of de- like Cannot... deflecting fire breath. Yeah, no, no, you can't deflect a fireball. 
That would be so funny. Yeah. You can deflect a, a, a Eldritch Blast, though, which I think is almost as funny. And deflect Eldritch Blast. You just turn to Murdoch from the gorillas during the, uh, not have kids with guns. What's the music video where he's like pumping the rugby ball, the, the uh, cricket balls? Got the, like pat on his nuts and he's publicly thrusting to deflect sure, balls sure, coming at him. Sure, I'll pretend like I know what you're talking about. Have you never seen that music video? It's an no. old gorillas music video. No. We're talking like phase one gorillas. No. No fucking clue what talking about. Damn it, it's a very fun. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I'll find it after podcast. It's fine. Okay. After that, at level 15, we get perfect focus. When you roll initiative, if you're below four focus points and you don't use your mechanic, uh, you don't use uncanny metabolism, you immediately regain four. You go Which, up to four. No, no, you go up to up four. Up yeah. to four. So yeah, yeah. if you were at two, you gain two. If you're at one, you gain three. If you're at three, you gain one. I, so I think the cool thing with this is that it specifies that you don't use your uncanny metabolism. So in theory, if you don't use it, you kind of have unlimited focus in theory. You know, like you'll run out, but you, you won't stop gaining them. Yes, I mean, pretty if much. If you use your metabolism, you will. Yeah. Well, it's when you roll initiative, so you won't stop gaining them at the start of fights. Yes. That being said, four is not very many, but yeah. No, I, I think they could have bumped that because at this point, they basically just don't want you to run out of them anyway. It he, almost makes you wonder why they still have a number value to it. it yeah, it does. It is start. It is kind of like rage where it's like, what's the point of it being an ammo count if I have such a ludicrously big supply of ammo? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe they're really trying to push the five or six encounters a day thing. Well, they literally say that. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm going to be honest. I, if Wizards it's never going to be a thing. I was going to say, if Wizards is thinking that's going to happen, it uh, Wizards, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to happen, dude. Nobody yeah, plays uh, that way. They're not going to. Yeah, that's this cope, bud. Sorry. It, it is. Yes. People play one fight a day or two fight a day. Like, that's just what people. Yeah. After that, we have superior defense. At the start of your turn, you can burn three focus points and gain resistance to all damage type six, except for force for some reason. Until well, you're incapacitated. Force is, the, force is the fuck you override everything magical one. Oh, true, true. Uh, it's funny. It says it's ideal when you're up against high level enemies that are pummeling you with elemental damage like an ancient white dragon's cold breath or a fire dreadnought steel charge. I mean, sure. Yeah, I mean, at that point, you're still going to get melted. There's not much you can do about it, but yeah. Well, you have resistance, so you're going to get less melted. Yeah, less melted, sure, I, yep. I guess. Uh, worth mentioning that ancient white dragon's cold breath, you cannot use your evasion on because it's a strength save. So, <laughs> I, I, you know, worth mentioning evasion not being mentioned at all. So now I'm confused to see if Monk is even getting evasion still. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it does it, you're going to get melted. Regardless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a couple of things Nothing in the you old, can do. old Monk that they just didn't mention. So I don't know, like evasion, stillness of mind kind of got pumped, kind of got put into the self restoration ability, uh, period of body doesn't really matter because the self restoration thing um, tongue of the sun and moon where you could speak all languages and everyone understands you that's probably gone I'm thinking um, also not, a bit of a nothing murder so not yeah kind of yeah also a thing that bards do and I feel like is kind of a weird thing for a monk to do um, yeah well it's also I, I think at the biggest level it's a level one wizard spell <laughs> true true uh, diamond soul uh, you gain, grants you proficiency in all saving throws. Additionally, whenever you make a saving throw, you can spend a key point to reroll it. That also hasn't been mentioned anywhere, so that might be gone. I don't know. A lot of weird. There's some gaps. There's some gaps in the D&D Beyond article, so I don't know what's going on there. 
guess we'll find out. I yeah, I suppose we will. Uh, after that, uh, like everybody else, level 19, you get your epic boon. They also recommend the boon of irresistible offense. Yeah, same same as the barbarian one. Punch yeah. good, hit hard. Yes. And then level 20 is a capstone. Your dex and wisdom increase by four points up to a max. It's just the barbarian thing. It's just the bar. It's it's literally just the barbarian thing. You know, it was the barbarian thing before, right? Like that's always been their capstone. Yep. No, I know. I know. I okay. know it is. Oh, no, I'm a liar. No, it wasn't. It was not their capstone before. Perf their capstone before was when you roll initiative, have no key points, you regain four key points. Oh, that's what you meant. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I thought you meant barbarians always had the other the champion. No, no, I thought. I thought the 2024 capstone was what Monk always had, but no, it was even worse. Oh, no, 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 no. No, it was it was worse. Now it's slightly better. You, I guess it's the barbarian one now, which is not very exciting, but I guess makes sense for Monk. So sure, whatever. Yeah, I guess. And these capstones just L's across the board, bud. L's across Bard the board. got a new one. Oh, is it cool? Yes. Bard actually got that a cool new capstone. I, it's not, it's not a hundred percent where I want it to be, but it is cooler. So, especially because the bard before just had the, you get some bardic inspiration back. <laughs> that was their. Yeah, that's uh... which are the worst capstones in the game. Like ah, the thing you are already doing. Here's a free handout. You're like, cool. Oh, that's right. Even better. I forgot. When you roll initiative and have no bardic inspiration left, you regain one use. One. Just one. Uh, so the new one's much better. The new one is much, much better than that. So, yeah. Uh, that's Monk. Uh, I mean, all right. Subclasses... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, so uh, some choices. I, choosing to bring over Warrior of Mercy, I just. Man, I just like don't fucking care about Mercy Monk. I just. Yeah, I don't either. It's just, I don't, I, it just doesn't feel, it's kind of like my World Tree Barbarian thing where I look at it, I'm like, what is this supposed to be, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, it's the healer monk. It's the, it's literally like the, uh, the, the, I'm using my key to heal people. Yeah. Like, I, I get I, what it, it is. It has a place, I just. Let me clarify. I get what it is. I get, I get it mechanically. Fictionally, I've never really understood what it was pulling from, you know? Just feels like a weird... No, I, I, yeah, I mean, it, it, to me, it, it comes from, like, you know, like, like Buddhist monk, like, uh, like, meditative healing. Oh, yeah. But that's always, like, self like it, it comes from things like the chakras. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about it. Even though the art of it was a dude wearing a plague doctor mask. Yeah, well, so Mercy's whole thing was it was it was healing and harming. It was yeah, it was yeah. sort of like a way of life kind of thing, or yeah. like a, like a circle of life kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, it's not bad. I just was like, of the monks you could have brought over, I would not have chosen it. That's for sure. Because let's, I mean, listen, you have dragon, you have astral self, drunken master, Kensei, sun soul, and you gave us mercy. You know, I like, think. Here's the thing. Shadow, Elements, and Open Hand I get because those were the player handbook ones originally. But Mercy? Of of the fourth option from the new books that, that wasn't player's handbook originally? Like, you went with the Mercy one? It's just not very exciting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, What's I like? mean, that's fair. I, the thing, so when you're talking about not very exciting, when I heard, when I read... Open hand is largely unchanged. I mean, it is. My eyes rolled into the back of my skull. Why? Because open hand technique is not that cool. Whenever you hit a creature with one of the attacks granted by your flurry of blows, you can knock them prone, 
push them 15 feet away or take their reactions away. Mm. That's yeah. it. Like they're, they're treating, I'm sorry, but they're treating open hand like they really cooked with this one. And the only thing they actually really cooked with was quivering palm. Everything else is just kind of like, it's not boring, but it's just not well, interesting either. Open hand is the like default monkey monk. And I think it's supposed to be, uh, you know, kind of like champion where it's very straightforward, you know? I, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I just and, and the open hand technique is like, oh, well, they have like some low key kind of battle mastery stuff and like, you know, it's very I, exactly. straightforward and direct. It's just it's I, yeah. I just wanted them to push that stuff. Sure, like I wanted. Yeah. Just I just wanted more. Because this is literally like open palm. This is literally Wing Chun. Side note. This is like the... I think it's funny that the wholeness of body ability is a bonus action that heals you a number of hit points equal to your martial arts die plus your wisdom modifier rather than three times your monk level, which, sure, fine. Um, so Barbarian, Monk, and Fighter all have second wind? <laughs> yes. I thought that was kind of funny. I, I mean, I also... Three times your monk levels. That's a lot of healing. I would... Like, why would... Why would you make that ability worse? Um, did it make it worse? That's a good, I don't know. So three times your monk so, level, you get it at level six, six. You're 18 points, 18 points minimum. Right. And then instead it equal to a roll of your martial arts. I put, oh, a one roll of your martial arts die. Oh yeah. At that level is, 20, you're getting back 60 hit points. That is a lot less healing, I guess, because it outshines second wind too much. But they felt like they needed to nerf it a little. <laughs> Maybe. I guess. Right. But like fighters also have way more sustain option. I feel they have more health. The the healing they get on a short rest. I mean, yeah, they. I mean, they have more durability. Sure. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I've never really thought about. I, I don't hear a lot of people say that open hand is bad or anything so i've never really thought about that much but i, I see what you're saying it, it is it is it is it's vanilla it's fine yeah again it's it's not that it's boring or that it's sorry it's not even that it's boring or bad it's just it just is not interesting yeah yeah hmm. uh did they get rid of this the is that thing right where it's like wait, wait this is the if a movie it's bad it's better than it being okay right you know? it's like you'd rather be mad about it than have like mild opinions on it yeah literally nothing to say uh, yeah i just they also they got a new feature called fleet step that allows you to use step of the wind as part of any bonus action that wasn't already used to perform step of the wind okay i'm a little not quite sure what that means is yeah, that mean little... you can flurry of blows and as a part of that step of the wind like i think so yes which means they lost the ability. I assume this means they lost Tranquility, which at the end of a long rest, you gain the effect of the Tranquility spell that lasts until your next long rest. Saving throw for the DC of the spell is eight plus plus and blah, blah, blah. Um, Wait, tranquility, mine reads Sanctuary. No, Tranquility is the ability and it lets you do you the Sanctuary. Yeah, yeah but you, you said the Tranquility spell. Oh, Sanctuary. The Tranquility ability that lets you cast the Sanct the sanctuary spell. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I guess they don't have that anymore. I don't even remember what sanctuary does. Uh, let's it's see. A, it, you can't attack the person unless they succeed a saving throw. Oh. Unless you succeed a saving throw, sorry. Django did it a lot. Sure. It's just that I'm so peaceful that you don't want to hit me. Sure. Any creature who targets it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I can see why they got rid of that one. That one's kind of meh. See, but that would be a cool level three feature, wouldn't it? Uh, you you get it at just low enough level that you're like, if it came oh, okay, with this is some, kind of a neat little thing. If it came with another thing, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Or shit, tie it into open hand technique and just be like, you just deflect. You just have this natural six. Uh, yeah, like you, your yeah, body yeah. just goes on autopilot and you just deflect attacks. 
That would, yeah. Uh, open hand technique remains unchanged with the exception of one of its options only blocking opportunity attacks rather than all reactions. Oh, they just made it worse. Huh. Did make it worse. Weird. I guess <sighs> open hand was too good in their eyes. Literally only quivering palm. The it does. Thing. Yes. Um, mercy. Basically, I, we were crapping on mercy being in there before. It's pretty much unchanged. It's the same as the Tasha's one, more or less. Nothing exciting there. Uh, Shadow actually sounds cool now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, so here's the question. As far as I'm aware, it still doesn't let you see into your own darkness. It does. It does. Yes. Uh, well, so it just uh, says it gives you dark vision. Oh, what? Okay, I remember watching a video. Someone said it lets you see in your own darkness. I, bro, I would fucking hope so, because that that was always the dumbest shit. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah, I'm yeah, this yeah. cool darkness monk. Yeah, yeah. But I can still be blinded by darkness. Yeah, weird. Okay, that is a little conflicting, huh? I, I thought I remember... It might have even been in the video of Jeremy Crawford that he said you can see in your own darkness. Huh. It's been a minute since I watched it, so I may be misremembering that something, but OK. The feature also gives you dark vision or upgrades yours if you have it. Right. But a creature with dark vision can't see through this darkness. That's what the darkness spell says. I don't know. A little confused. You can move your. You can also move the field of darkness you create, which is useful. That's uh, cool. Your improved shadow step allows you to spend a focus point to ignore dim light or darkness restriction of shadow step, and make an unarmed strike immediately after you teleport as part of the same bonus action. That's cool. You could just teleport, like do the te do a fucking teleport strike. Fucking. Um, Couldn't you already do that though? N uh, no. No. You could teleport, but you couldn't attack. Uh, oh, okay. You had okay. advantage, but you couldn't attack as part of the bonus action. So they just kind of combined them. So you basically can do more stuff. You can do the teleport attack and do something else. Whereas before you would teleport, Copy. have advantage on your next attack, but, you know, was still using it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um... Finally, Cloak of Shadows is a new level 17 feature that allows you to wreath your shelf in shadows. The effect lasts for a minute until you're incapacitated or end your turn in bright light. While it's active, you have the invisible condition, which persists even if you attack or cast a spell. You can move through occupied spaces as if they were difficult to rain, and you can use your flurry of blows without needing to spend any focus points. So you have a weird shadow sicko mode thing. That's cool. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's pretty sick for, like, especially for, for flavor. That's cool that you're just this sort of shadow demon. Shadow demon ninja thing, yeah. Yeah, so all of that, very cool. I'm confused about the seeing into your own darkness thing now, though, because I could have sworn I remember somebody, I watched a video and someone said, you can see through your own darkness now. But this doesn't appear to be saying that. Uh, so I don't know. It gives you permanent dark vision, though, which is interesting. Probably it probably says the dark vision you receive can see through your own darkness, maybe or something like that. I hope it would say something like that, because uh, yeah, seriously, it is very goofy if you can't, because the whole thing is just supposed to be like the ninja monk, right? Who like strikes from the shadows. So, you know, you're doing that. You're the whole thing. The whole point of shadow monk is to do Akuma's raging demon, right? You cloak them in darkness and then strike them from where they can't see you, right? Like you're supposed to be doing Street yeah. Fighter Five raging demon, but you can't because you put down the darkness and you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Now I can't. Now I can't see either. Yeah. Now I can't fucking see. Defeats. Defeats the point. Defeats the point for sure. Yeah. What was their old? After that, we you can exploit. Hold on. Their old ability, opportunist. You can exploit. A creature's momentary distraction when it's hit by an attack. Whenever a creature within five feet of you is hit by an attack made by a creature other than you, you could use a reaction to make a melee attack against that creature. Oh, yeah, that's whatever as fuck. Yeah, sure. OK, uh, warrior of elements attack at disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, because you're blind because you're blind. Uh, yeah, warrior of four elements. All right, 
No four. Honest thoughts. No four. Honest thoughts. No four. Just elements. Oh, of the elements. Presumably because they actually added more <laughs> yeah. elements. Um, based on what we got, uh, it's okay. So it's. I think it's quite a bit better than the articles uh, explaining here because I've heard a couple. I've heard some people talking about it in videos. It's actually quite cool. Uh, that's good to hear. That, that makes me genuinely happy. I it just. It's like, ah, your attacks give you 10 feet of reach. It's like, okay, so your astral self. Like, well, you get elemental damage. You're like, yeah, but astral self does force damage. <laughs> like, I mean, astral self probably won't do force damage anymore, but yeah. I would, I mean, um, so many things give you magic force damage that I'd be a little annoyed if it didn't. I mean, it doesn't matter because I mean, at level five, you do force damage anyway. Oh, right, so. right, 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 right. Um, you can also push or pull a target 10 feet. You get the elementalism cantrip. Yeah, from what I remember, people were saying, and I, it's a little annoying. The article's actually not mentioning this. Um, you can, like, spend key points to, like, uh, cause elemental effects to happen. That's cool. That's the part where it says, as you level up, you get the ability to create AOE elemental burst, ways to navigate the battlefield, and damage resistances to aid survivability. Yeah, people are saying that, like, you spend key points... To like do other stuff oh oh they put out a separate article on just the four elements just the elements what the fuck okay yeah i just realized if you click it it hyperlinks over um uh striking out elemental infused punch reach out and grab them so level three, you get the elementalism cantrip, which is a new like prestidigitation that's focused around elemental effects. Level six, um, at the cost of only two focus points and a magic action, uh, you'll be happy you've got the elemental burst when you need to break out the flashy kaboomy side of the, uh, oh my God, some of the writing sometimes. Um, this feature allows you to detonate a 20 foot radius sphere explosion of acid, cold fire, lightning or thunder damage targets in the sphere that fail their deck save. Uh, take damage equal to three rolls of your martial arts die. Um, uh, as your martial arts die increases, so your damage output with this ability, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. Stride of the elements at level 11. Uh, well, this feature may mechanically... Uh, trying to read and speak at the same time here. Uh, this upgrades your elemental attunement, providing you a fly speed and a swim speed equal to your speed while it's active. Wait, which up upgrades your elemental attunement? Which ability is elemental attunement? Okay, I'm slightly confused on that one. Um, well, this feature may mechanically give you fly swim seed blah 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 part of it elemental zoom is level three ability is it i see element it yeah. says manipulate elements look scroll up go up oh there it is this article is organized uh, like organized very weird. the shit uh it okay, so elemental attunement infuses your unarmed strikes with elemental energy, extends your reach to 10 feet, and allows you to output acid, cold, fire, lightning, or thunder damage, and provides the potential to toss your enemies around on the battlefield. Uh, monks who throw elemental hands as soon as they can for as long as will be happy to hear that this is an extremely efficient feature. You can enter elemental attunement for one focus point at the start of your turn, so you're not wasting an action, blah, blah, blah. The state lasts 10 minutes. Okay, so you go into like elemental sicker mode and start throwing out damage. You do you do the you do the fucking avatar, you get the water whippies on your arm and start thwipping dudes. Yeah. Um okay, and then so it's saying stride of the elements. Uh upgrade your elemental attunement. Ah, so when you go sicko mode, you get extra stuff. Got it, got it, got it. Uh this person definitely watched Avatar and they said, and of course, this includes making an ice slide or using jets of fire to propel themselves across the battlefield. Hmm. Yeah. OK. And then it immediately says below that. Nice move, Twinkle Toes. I, yes, we got it, bud. You watched Avatar. We also watched Avatar. Yes, we understand. <laughs> um, having a 10 foot reach on your unarmed strikes plus a fly speed makes you almost impossible to pin down. Plus, you have L there's a lot of just like opinion shit here. And that's not what I want. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, that's the thing that's killing me. It's like the disciple no longer. All this is like the fact that it's all bolded makes you think that that's it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not the ability. Feature. <laughs> yeah, sorry for anyone who's listening. We're trying to parse out what is actually talking about the abilities and what is just the person giving their opinion on it, which is not what we're trying to get right now. Uh, elemental epitome. Uh, this well-named feature, bro. This well-named feature is the epitome of your elemental attunement. It provides a defense movement base and offense boost to your kit and really makes you feel like a massive. Oh, okay. First, you gain resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning and thunder, uh, and you can change which damage type your resistance applies at the start of each of your turns. Cool. So you go avatar state. <laughs> Next, your step of the wind gets a buff, allowing you to travel 20 feet further uh, while flying or swimming. Uh, and dish out elemental damage equal to one of your martial arts die to any creature you get within five feet of you. Okay, so it's Aang's avatar state when he was facing Fire Lord Ozai and he had the spinny elements around him. Uh, I really don't like that it says, while flying or swimming, I may remind you. No, yeah, you yeah. may not. I remember. <laughs> Last, when you hit with an unarmed strike, you could deal extra damage equal to one of your martial arts die once per turn, seeing as you're... Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, so... Getting all the opinion nonsense out of there. Yes, Elemental Monk seems a lot cooler. A lot of that. Fair enough. As we tried to parse it all out, a lot of that does seem fun. You get an Avatar State, you get a Sicko Moat, you, you get a mini Avatar State and a full blown Avatar State. <laughs> you get some Elemental Explosion stuff, you get some resistances. It's, it's, you can deal all of the various damage types. That's cool. Basically, they just made a new subclass and completely took out old Warrior of the Four Elements because it, it was like it was bad. Before, well, yeah. And before it was just the monk who occasionally cast spells is how that old one worked. And nobody liked that because that's not no, it was boring. Why would I want to do that when I'm playing monk? So, yeah. Yeah, the, the sad thing, I always love people like, oh, so you want to play the avatar? Cool. Don't play multi-class way of four elements with fucking druid. That's how you yeah, do that. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, yeah. Mm, that sucks. Yep. Uh, but yeah. So now you can actually play the avatar monk and it's cool. Okay. Now that's monk <laughs> after we mm. bury that was, that is going to sound so <laughs> I'm sorry to whoever was listening on that one, because that definitely just sounded like a confusing mess of me trying to parse that article very quickly and read aloud at the it same time. It is very, yeah, it's really difficult to break <laughs> apart while it's you're trying to like... in a very strange way, and I I don't know why he did it the way he... Whatever. He just put a lot of opinion between the abilities, which is not yeah. what I wanted. I just wanted the abilities. Thank you. If you're going to do that, just put all of the abilities up at, explained at the top. And then the second half is my opinion on each of the abilities. If you're going to do that. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Um, also, I like the art for the way warrior of the elements, the angry orc lady punching with her fire fist. Big fan. Not that that has anything to do with it, but I'm a fan. Yeah, no, she's so she's doing the like Yang Shaolong. Yeah, like, yeah. Fist smash. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty. Any other any other final things? Now both these classes are sick. Um, how did you fumble the bag so hard with Ranger when these are so cool? America, explain. <laughs> Take a shot every time we bring up Ranger. <laughs> uh, you're gonna be hammered by the end of this miniseries. I, I, I dude. <laughs> I want to be like it's not that bad. No, it's it's it sucks, dude. I no, can't. it is that bad. It's pretty much. It is bad. not redeemable. It's that bad, dude. I mean, it's it's crazy how bad it is. It's just boring, really, is what it is more than anything. It's just boring. That's what that's what gets me. And I was oh my god, I was listening to another video and they were going through the 2024 book. And they were pointing out how Ranger is going to have such a hard time with bonus action traffic jams because you're going to have stuff like uh, if you play a Beastmaster Ranger, you use your bonus action to command your beast and you need to use a bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark and you need to use a bonus action to move Hunter's Mark from one target to another target. So you're going to have all these turns where like 
you have to decide what to use the bonus action. It's a whole thing. You know, so, so here's the sad thing, right? I don't necessarily think that's a totally bad thing because that's kind of what I had to do with Armor Artificer. But with Armor, there was like a clear set. You do this and then 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 you repeat, you know? The thing with Ranger is that it's like you pick one and then the game drastically changes and then you go, uh, well, I wasn't planning on swapping my Hunter's Mark, but that Barbarian just crit twice, so... Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, it just feels. Yeah, it's like clunky. It's like a traffic jam, and it's not immediately clear how to deal with it every time. And yeah, it's just it's a whole it, the whole thing. But oh well, I guess I don't know. I'm probably still gonna end up trying it, so <laughs> I'll report back. I'm just gonna stick with my revised ranger. Well, I mean, if we swap over in our current game, I'm probably going to end up using a 2024 Ranger, so. Why? Why would you do this to yourself? Well, I want to at least try it. No. Although it's I don't be... have that problem. My class isn't going to be yeah. in 2024. <laughs> yes, I know. Me and yes, I. Yeah, we were just talking no about No class for the dub, lady, uh, baby. <laughs> Mr. Rex Knoll class, let's go. Yeah, so it's actually really fun and really interesting. <laughs> I will, I will, uh, you know, report back on that one in the future, probably. Anyway, anything else to say about Monk? Monk and Barbarian much improved, basically. Yes, no, they are they are sick. Like I said, honestly, like, I didn't think Barbarian needed that much improvement, but here we are. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I I liked most of Barbarian to begin with, but uh, yeah, I mean, here we are. I guess I wish we kept Brutal Critical in some way, shape, or form, but you can't always get the things you want. Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. If you, yeah. If something, something, if you like this, uh, like, share, subscribe. Yeah, if you like that last 20 minutes or so of chaotic nonsense, follow on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, you throw us a follow and uh, at your dog. Yeah, um, yes, wizards I, can suck my nuts. Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> okay, with your weird NDA bullshit, don't do that ever again. It's, oh, it's, God. A little bit of good faith goes a long way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, that, that, yeah, that's it. That's all I got.